Hello everyone, I'm Yu Fang Chen from Academia Sinica. Today I'm going to talk about our work, solving not substring constraint with thread arbitration. This is today's outline. We will first define the problem and then talk about thread arbitration. This is an under approximation technique done by a reduction to linear integer arithmetic or Prisberg formula. And then we'll talk about our encoding and evaluation results. We will begin the talk with a simple example. So in this code, S is initially empty. And we have a non-deterministic loop here. In a loop body, we always append A to the beginning and S to the uh, B to the end of the string S. This program has a uh, environment that S is always begin with a sequence of A and then end with a sequence of B. The number of A and B will be the same. We can express such an invariant in a string constraint, combining word equation S equals the concatenation of two strings U and V. A regular constraint, U is in the regular language A star. In the other word, U contains only A and V contains only B in the regular language B star. And the length of U and V are the same. This is length constraint. To verify such a code, we need a solver that supports all these operators. All available string constraint solvers support the so-called basic string constraint, which include regular constraints. For instance, x concatenated with a concatenated with y is in a regular language a star b a, or the equi uh, equalities or disequality. For instance, x z is equivalent to y a or z is not equivalent to aa. Integer arithmetic over lenses, for instance, the length of x is equivalent to the two times the length of y plus y, and their Boolean connections. Uh, the basic string constraints are very expressive. They are already enough to model many of the standard string APIs in programming languages. For instance, the command y is equal equivalent to the nth character of x, or we can write it in this, for, this form, can be expressed by the word equation x equals p y q, and the length constraint, the length of p is n, and the length of y is 1. However, we can still find many operations in programming languages that are not expressible with basic string constraints. The negation of substring operation is one of the most important operations that are not expressible with basic string constraints. So if uh, we look at the substring constraint, x contains the substring y, we can express this operation using uh, the word equation. x is equivalent to the concatenation of p dot y dot q. Then one naive idea is, okay, how about we use this equality to handle the negation? So we model the substring, not substring relation. X does not have the substring Y with the, this, or the this equality constraint. S is not equivalent to the concatenation of PYQ. This naive idea is, however, wrong. We look at this particular simple example. X is equivalent to AAB, Y is AB, P is C, Q is C, C. This is a good model for this, this, uh, what it, this equality. You see, X is AAB is not equivalent to C, A, B, C, C. This is okay. However, in this case, Y is a substrate of X. To correctly model this, uh, substring, not substring relation. We need to use quantifiers. We need to say for all possible prefix and suffix, S is not equivalent to the concatenation of P and Y and Q. This is a very difficult problem. In general, first of all, the word equation are not decidable. And this is a well-known result. Not substring constraints are important in expressing many string functions in programming languages. In particular, to encode 
the left or rightmost occurrences. For example, index of is a very common string function. It says that n is the index of the leftmost occurrence of y in x. To express index of, we need the following two constraints. First, we say that x can be divided into three parts, p, y, q. And the length of p is n. Then we ensure that n is the position of the leftmost y. In the other word, the string p, y1, which is obtained by removing the last character y2 from the string p, y, doesn't does not contain the substring y. In many string functions, we need to express the left or rightmost occurrence. Therefore, we need the substring relation. Here are some examples. Now we know solving that substring constraint is important in model programming languages. We also know it is difficult. One evidence is first order word equation are undecidable in general. One idea to simplify the problem is abstraction. In our past experience in solving basic string constraints, flat abstraction, which restricts the solution space of a string constraint from sigma star or possible strings to strings follow some simple pattern, is very useful. The flat abstraction is based on the observation that satisfying assignments of common string constraints can be demonstrated by simple patterns. This pattern, we call it flat pattern. They are expressable by finite state automata with no nested loop. Or in the other word, strings in the form of S1 star, S2 star to Sn star. This S, for S1 to Sn are strings, and the star means uh, repetition. By restricting to the flat pattern, in PLDI 2007, we show that the, the problem of solving basic string constraint can be reduced to a problem of solving quantifier-free Prisberg formulae. In this work, we extend the threatening approach to support not substring constraints. We use the idea that U is not a substring of V if and only if one of the two conditions hold. First, U is longer than V and hence is not a substring. The other is that uh, in case U is shorter, then for all possible shift of U inside V, there exists a dis dismatched position. So here that uh, if there is no shift, we find uh, this position that they are different. And we shift, it, shift U by one, uh, then we find another dismatch etc. until the end. If for all possible shift that we find a dismatch, then U is not a substring of V also hold. So here we show how to encode the statement one. U is longer than V. Recall that after we restrict the solution space to flat, uh, the flat pattern, U is now in the form of S1 repeated K1 times at, and until SM repeated KM times, and similarly for V. Therefore, we have the length of U is equivalent to K1 times the length of X1 plus da, 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 plus the K, KM times the length of SM. And V, the length of V is equivalent to L1 times the length of T1 plus da, 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 plus the length of LN times the length of TN. Now, statement one is satisfied if and only if the following equation holds. Basically, the length of U is bigger than the length of V. Now, we show the encoding of statement two, which says that for all possible shift, there exists a position of this match between U and V. I recall that we know how to encode the length of U and V after threatening. 
And now we know that the statement two is satisfied if and only if the following formula is satisfied. It says that uh, for all possible position shift for shift position, there exists one disymmetric position between U and V. Now uh, the, we know how to encode the dense difference between U and V and to encode this carrot at operation, we already explained how to reduce this to basic string constraint in the previous slides. After the introduction of the two encoding, now we obtain our main result. U is not a substring of V has a model if the condition one or two is satisfied. Recall that each string variable S corresponds to a string of the form S1 uh, repeated sometimes, S2 repeated sometimes, SM repeated sometimes. By control, controlling the parameters M and K, we can control the dimension of the search, sub, search subspace. To demonstrate the performance of our approach, we implement a prototype tool, STR. Inside STR, we have two engines. When received a string constraint, we copy the constraint and send it to, to the two uh, internal solvers in parallel. So this hostage solver is from some existing work, and it is responsible for hand answering onset. The threatening approach is the technique introduced in this paper and it can only answer set. This is the main focus of our paper. We run a tool on several benchmark sets, including some benchmarks obtained by running the symbolic executor PY Compile on several uh, well-known projects, including BioPython, Django, and the bug. And also we run it on some existing benchmarks uh, lit code, PYEX, A+, CVC for STR, full string in integer, SDARC, S string fast, etc. And this is our experiment setting. So this is the experimental result. We compare STR with two main string, string solvers, test 3 and CVC4. And the more important thing is the set category, which is the main contribution of this paper. From this table, we can see that uh, SDR is comparable with uh, the two mainstream solvers, and actually a little better in many benchmarks.